you're watching a free sample video from Teachers Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. One of the key elements of mathematics, or something that's so important to what we do, is that we need to justify everything we do. We have to be able to prove why what we're doing is mathematically valid. So here we're going to look at some of the justifications that we might use in solving an equation or in isolating a variable. So first, one thing we often use are properties of equality. Like for example, if I have 3x equals 5, I can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. I can divide both sides by 3. That's the division property of equality. Or if I have something like x plus 1 equals 8, and to solve that I want to subtract 1 from both sides. As long as I do the same thing to both sides of the equal sign, that's mathematically valid. That would be called the subtraction property of equality. Next we have multiplicative and additive inverses and identities. So like an inverse, a multiplicative inverse is if I have something like 3 and 1 third. Those two things multiply to get 1, and that's useful in solving equations. If I was again solving something like 3x equals 5, I would want to divide both sides by 3, which you could also say as multiply by 1 third. So that's the multiplicative identity. Same thing with additive identity. If I had something like x minus 2 is equal to 8, I could add 2 to both sides because negative 2 and positive 2 are additive identities. Next, we have the distributive, commutative, and associative properties that have to go with multiplication, and we'll see those in action. We have the zero product property. That's a big one when we're solving quadratics. For example, if I was solving x squared plus 7x plus 12, I would factor that as x plus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. And then to solve that, I would set each factor equal to 0 using what's called the zero product property. We have the reflexive property of equality or congruence. That's when I'm saying that something is congruent to itself. We see this a lot in, uh, in triangle proofs, like uh, congruence, triangle congruent proofs or similarity proofs. We have also the symmetric pro property of equality or congruence, like if I have A plus B, that's equal to B plus A. Sometimes we see that in triangle proofs as well. The transitive property, that's where if I have, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. You could think of it in terms of money. If I'm saying 100 pennies is equal to 10 dimes and 10 dimes is a dollar, then I could skip the dimes part and just say 100 pennies equals a dollar. That's the transitive property. We have substitution property of equality, which is similar to the transitive property, but it's a little bit different. Um, you see substitution a lot when you're solving systems of equations and how you substitute one expression into another equation. And last, we have simplifying or combining like terms. And all of these are mathematical justifications that we need to keep in mind for any solving or proving that we do. We're going to look at an example where it says given 2x minus 6x plus 4 is equal to negative 3 times the quantity x plus 1, show that x is equal to 7. Okay, well if I were given just that original equation, I couldn't help myself. I just want to start combining like terms and distributing. But what we're going to be practicing here is explaining what we're doing along the way. In fact, this problem, they tell us the answer. They told us the answer, x is 7. What this really wants us to get at is how we justify each step. I'm going to be doing this solving on the board, and aloud I'm going to be saying the property I'm using. On your slide, you can see justification and statement set up in a, what we call a two-column proof, but that's not always necessary. So if I were approaching this problem, the first thing I might want to do is use the distributive property on the right-hand side. This negative 3 times x plus 1 is rewritten as follows. Negative 3 times x, and then negative 3 times 1. That's called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. That's one of my justifications. The next thing I would do when solving this is combine like terms, or simplify. These guys right here, 2x minus 6x, that's the same thing as negative 4x. Again, I know you all could solve this equation. We're not, we don't care so much about the fact that x equals 7. What we're really trying to focus on here is the justifications for each step. So the next thing I might want to do is get all the constants on one side of the equation. So for example, uh, I'm trying to do this in the same way your slide does. I want to get all of these x's on the same side of the equal sign. So what I'm going to do is use negative 4x and adding 4x is going to give me 0x here. And I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to add both thing, the same thing to both sides of an equation. That's called the addition property of equality. Using that same idea, I don't want to have x minus 3. I want to have just x. So what I'm going to do is add 3 to both sides. Again, that addition property of equality. And now I've shown how x equals 7. 
So this, um, I've talked through how this could be organized in what's called a two-column proof, and the essence of what we're doing here is justifying each step in our solving process. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.